I've been wanting to build another Dragon Ball related character for a while now after building Goku and I recently got a request for Broly and frankly he's just a lot of fun to play around with so we're gonna dive in because this is D&D Builds where we have an outlet to make all sorts of ridiculous Dungeons and Dragons characters and stop driving the people in our lives insane with them. Broly is pretty much the epitome of a rage filled Super Saiyan. He is an absolutely unstoppable force to the point that it takes tons of Z fighters to go up against or even situations where big powerhouses actually have to fuse together. So with that in mind, let's dive into the build. First things first, we have to pick a race, and he is a Saiyan, so we're going to take a similar path to what we did with Goku and use the race Asamar. There's actually a few different variations of this race, so we're going to use the one from Volo's Guide to Monsters. When you choose this race, you also get to choose a sub-race, and we're going to choose a Protector Asamar. This gives us the feature Radiant Soul. Unleashing powerful divine energy within yourself, giving you a flying speed of 30 feet, which is something we were going to have to figure out anyways, and that saves us a lot of time. And once on each of your turns, when you activate this Radiant Soul feature, you can deal extra radiant damage on any attack or spell dealing extra damage equal to your level. Then when it comes to a background, Broly is just kind of left on a random planet to survive, and I think that fits pretty well with Wild Spacer. This gives us skill proficiencies in athletics and survival, and it gives us the feature Wild Space Adaptation, which is going to be very powerful for Broly because it grants you the feat Tough. And this feat gives you an extra two hit points per level as you level up in this build. Then when it comes to some stats, we're going to be min-maxing the crap out of this thing. Because Broly's sure not known for being intelligent, wise, or charismatic. So we're going to take all of our points and put it into strength, dexterity, and constitution, bringing them all to 15, leaving all of our mental stats dumped down to 8. We also have some points left over from our race, but we're going to customize where we can put them thanks to Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. This allows us to put our racial bonuses wherever we want, so we're going to boost up our Strength, Dexterity, and Constitution all one more time, bringing them all to 16. Then when it comes to a starting class, between the purely physical stats that we have, and the fact that Broly is pretty much the epitome of a blinding, rage-filled character, we're definitely going to go with the Barbarian. When you choose Barbarian at first level, you get some of the most health out of any class in D&D, because you get to use a D. 12 for your health. You also get proficiencies in light armor, medium armor, and shields, but we're not going to worry about most of those. And you get to use simple and martial weapons, although we won't really be using those either. Finally, you get saving throws and strength and constitution, and you get to choose two skills. So we're going to grab intimidation because that's definitely fitting for Broly, and he does have a soft spot in his heart for animals, so we'll also grab animal handling. At first level of Barbarian, you get the feature Rage. So you can enter a rage on a bonus action, and while you're raging, you have advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws. When you make a melee attack using your strength, you gain bonus damage to the roll, which is currently a plus two, but that does go up as you level up in Barbarian. And finally, you have resistance to all physical damage. The only downside is that you can't cast spells or even concentrate on them while you're raging. So in order to pull off some of the crazy things you can do in the Dragon Ball universe, we'll have to find a way around using spells to pull off some of the effects. Additionally, at first level of Barbarian, you get unarmored defense. So your armor class equals 10, plus your dexterity modifier, plus your constitution modifier, currently setting it at 16. And considering you charge into battle bare-chested, this is what we're going to be relying on. At second level of Barbarian, you get Danger Sense, so you have advantage on dexterity saving throws against effects that you can see. Additionally, at second level of Barbarian, you get Reckless Attack, and that seems pretty fitting for Broly because it seems like he's always attacking recklessly, giving you advantage on all of your attacks for the turn, but it also gives your enemies advantage against you. Then at third level of Barbarian, you get to choose a Barbarian subclass, otherwise known as a Primal Path. And there's a few interesting choices here, but there is one subclass that is going to be able to help us way more than anything else. Broly might be a bit of a berserker, or you could probably argue for something Storm Herald related, but there's some things that'll help us out in the Wild Magic Primal Path. So that's what we're going to go with. When you choose Wild Magic as your Primal Path, you get Magic Awareness. So you can really sense magic around you, and it will allow you to know the location of any spell or magic item within 60 feet of you that isn't behind total cover. This doesn't really apply to Broly too much, but the thing that's really going to help us is the other feature you get at third level, Wild Surge. So when you enter your Rage, you can roll on the Wild Magic table. This has a list of eight different effects that you can actually apply. If the effect happens to require 
error saving throw, the DC equals 8 plus your proficiency bonus plus your constitution modifier. But all of the effects actually seem to apply to Broly, at least if we do a little bit of tweaking here and there. If you're blasting out energy in a giant dome around you, which Broly tends to do, rolling a 1 on the wild magic table will achieve this, because each creature of your choice that you can see within 30 feet of you has to succeed on a constitution saving throw or take 1d12 necrotic damage, while also boosting your temporary hit points by 1d12 plus your barbarian level. If you're in the situation where you're just incredibly fast, rolling a two is gonna do the job because you can teleport up to 30 feet to an unoccupied space you can see, and until your rage ends, you can just keep using this effect on every one of your bonus actions. Rolling a three on the wild magic table will help with some idea of blasting that we might wanna pull off as Broly. You throw out plenty of energy blasts, and the third effect actually says that a creature like a flump or a pixie appears within five feet of a creature you can see within 30 feet of you. You can just play this off as a bit more of an energy blast because at the end of your current turn, that intangible spirit of the flump for pixie actually explodes and each creature within five feet of it must succeed on a dexterity saving throw or take 1d12 force damage. And until your rage ends, you can use this effect over and over again on every one of your bonus actions. Then the fourth choice we have available to us is that magic infuses one weapon of your choice that you are holding. Until your rage ends, the weapon's damage type actually changes to force and it gains the light and throne properties with a normal range of 20 feet and a long range of 60 feet. And if you throw that weapon, it immediately reappears in your hand at the end of your current turn. So while Broly doesn't really use weapons most of the time, we can play this off as another type of energy blast because you're just gonna be throwing the weapon anyways and it deals force damage, which feels a bit more magical. Then as far as that fifth choice that we have available to us on this table, whenever a creature hits you with an attack roll, that creature actually takes 1d6 force damage as pure energy just lashes out from you in retribution. And considering you're just emitting insane energy all the time as Broly, this is definitely fitting. Number six on this table actually feels more fitting than almost anything else, especially in the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie when he just goes full-blown berserking insane because this feature surrounds you in multicolored protective lights, granting you plus one to your armor class. And if you just so happen to have some allies within 10 feet of you, they gain the same benefit. Number seven on this table is actually what might apply the least, but we can tweak it a little bit because it makes it so flowers and vines temporarily grow around you. And until your rage ends, the ground within 15 feet of you is difficult to rain for your enemies. You can just think of this as the energy again, blasting out from you and just making it difficult for your enemies to get to you. Then finally, number eight and the last option on this wild magic table is a very straightforward energy blast that we don't have to modify at all because a bolt of light shoots from your chest and can hit a creature within 30 feet of you if they fail on a constitution saving throw, taking 1d6 radiant damage and also blinding them until the start of your next turn. And you can use this effect every turn on your bonus action while your rage is still going. I know that was a lot of effects to get through, but we can still keep leveling up in Barbarian and improving them. Because at fourth level of Barbarian, you get an ability score improvement, and I was just gonna dive into strength or constitution because it'll help pretty much everything, but we need to be able to hit a bit harder. So we're gonna pick up a feat. And since we rely on our hands so much, let's take the feat fighting initiate and grab unarmed fighting. This makes it so you can punch people and do a bit more damage. Because if you don't have this feature or you're not some level of monk, you're only gonna be dealing one point of damage plus your strength modifier and maybe some rage damage if you happen to be raging whenever you punch an enemy. But thanks to this fighting style, you can deal 1d6 damage plus your strength modifier and 1d8 if you have nothing in your hands at all. And finally, it actually boosts your grappling ability too. Because whenever you're grappling an enemy, you can deal an extra 1d4 damage at the start of each of your turns. And you're going to be one hell of a grappler because thanks to being in rage, you have advantage on strength checks, which is what you're going to use for grappling if you wanted to use that. Then at 5th level of Barbarian, you get the all-important extra attack, so you can attack twice instead of once whenever you take the attack action on your turn. And at 5th level of Barbarian, you get fast movement, so your speed is increased by 10 feet while you aren't wearing heavy armor. Then at 6th level of Barbarian, you get another feature from being a wild magic barbarian with bolstering magic. So you can bolster yourself or a companion. As an action, you touch one creature, which can be yourself, and you can choose one particular benefit. So for 10 minutes, the creature touched 
can roll a d3 whenever making an attack roll or an ability check and add the number to the rolled d20 or you can use this feature to roll a d3 and the creature you touch can regain an expended spell slot equal to or less than the number rolled on that dice. But we're not going to worry too much about that one since we don't have the ability to cast any magic ourselves as a barbarian. So we'll mostly be using it for boosting our attack rolls or ability checks. Then at 7th level of barbarian you get feral instinct giving you advantage on initiative rolls and you can't be completely surprised if you aren't incapacitated. Then at 8th level of barbarian you get another ability score improvement so we're going to boost up our strength by two points and then at ninth level of barbarian you get brutal critical so whenever you crit on an attack you can deal extra damage equal to one more roll of that dice brutal critical also increases to two additional dice at 13th level and three additional dice at 17th level also at 9th level, that rage damage that was a plus 2 is now a plus 3. Then at 10th level of Barbarian, you get another feature from Wild Magic, Unstable Backlash. So immediately after you take damage or fail a saving throw while raging, you can use your reaction to roll on the Wild Magic table and immediately produce the effect rolled. However, this effect does replace the current Wild Magic effect, so only use it if you're willing to swap it out but I think most of them are gonna be pretty helpful, especially if Broly gets hit and then he just screams in anger and blasts out a bolt of light. Then at 11th level of Barbarian, you get Relentless Rage. And this feels very fitting for Broly because he is just a bottomless pit of rage. So your rage can actually keep you fighting despite grievous wounds. If you drop to zero hit points while you're raging and don't die outright, you can make a DC 10 constitution saving throw. And if you succeed, you drop to one hit point instead. Each time you use this feature after the first, the DC actually increases by five, so you can keep surviving, but it's obviously gonna get harder. That DC does reset back down to 10 once you finish a short or long rest. Then at 12th level of Barbarian, you get another ability score improvement, so we're gonna go ahead and max out our strength. And then at 13th level of Barbarian, that brutal critical die I mentioned does upgrade. Then at 14th level of Barbarian, you get another feature from Wild Magic, Controlled Surge. So now whenever you roll on the Wild Magic table, you can actually roll the dice twice, and you can choose which of the two effects you want to unleash. And if you happen to roll the same number on both dice, you can actually ignore the number and choose any effect you want on the table. This is actually super helpful, especially with Unstable Backlash, because now you get to roll twice as soon as you rage, and when somebody attacks you, you can roll twice again. You can just keep doing it. And you have to remember, as a barbarian, you're probably going to be on the front lines. So, using Unstable Backlash, using your reaction on every round, you have a good opportunity to deal damage to anybody attacking you. Or teleport away if you happen to need that, or even boost up your temporary hit points if you need that instead. There are so many options that's going to make you a bit of a powerhouse. Then at 15th level of Barbarian, you get Persistent Rage. So now, your rage just doesn't end unless you happen to fall unconscious or you choose to end it. So you are a bottomless pit of rage just like Broly really is. Then at 16th level of Barbarian, you get another ability score improvement. So we're gonna go ahead and boost up our constitution by two points, which is gonna help our health and our armor class. Also at this level, your rage damage is boosted from a plus three to a plus four. Then at 17th level of Barbarian, you get that additional dice from Brutal Critical. Then at 18th level of Barbarian, you get Indomitable Might. So if you make a strength check and it happens to be less than your strength score, which is currently 20, you can actually use your strength score in place of the total, which pretty much means that you're gonna never fail a strength check. So if you wanna do plenty of grappling and utilize that 1d4 you get from unarmed fighting, it's gonna be pretty hard for anybody to resist it. Then at 19th level of Barbarian, you get one more ability score improvement. So we're gonna go ahead and max out our constitution, which helps our health again and our armor class again. And then at 20th level of Barbarian, you get the ultimate feature of being a Barbarian, Primal Champion. This takes your strength and constitution scores and boosts them by four, as well as boosting the actual maximum. So now you can have 24 strength and 24 constitution. So now, while he's in full Super Saiyan form, and I will say that being in Super Saiyan form is a mixture of using your rage and your radiant soul from being an Asamar, means that a normal punch is gonna deal 1d8 
plus 7 for your strength modifier, thanks to it becoming 24, then an additional plus 4 from your rage, and finally a plus 20 radiant damage from your protector Osmar Radiant Soul, meaning you can deal up to 39 damage in a single punch. And if somebody wants to come back and hit you, fighting through anything from your wild magic, which could give you some temporary hit points or retaliate against anybody hitting you, but if they manage to get through all that, your unarmored defense makes your armor class with a constitution of 24, now a 19, even if you don't have any sort of shield on you, and that could be boosted up to 20 if you happen to have that wild magic that boosts your armor class by one more point. I know this build was pretty straightforward, but I thought it was the most fitting way to build Broly. It gets his core abilities, he can fly, he is super hard to kill, insanely strong, and it really hammers in on that rage-filled character that he is. I got a request for this build and I had to immediately jump on it because I remember seeing the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie in theaters and I've been a Dragon Ball fan for a long time. I remember trying to hunt down the old videos and all the old movies with Broly, but seeing it in theaters, especially in a completely packed theater filled with Dragon Ball fans, it was one of the best movie going experiences I've ever had. And the energy in that theater was just insane. If there's any other builds that you want, let me know in the comments down below. And if you want the character sheet for this build or any of my other builds, feel free to check out my Patreon linked in the description down below. Just like all of these incredible people, but especially my player character patrons, Alex, bad in person, Benjamin, Caleb Roan, Isabel Walker, Jameson Jones, which totally sounds like a superhero alter ego, Karkat Kitsune, Kilon, Melendez Robinson, The Dino 21, Wyatt Newsom, Yaksha Senpai, and Z13. Then going above and beyond all of that is my Dungeon Master level patrons that I actually play D&D with, which I stream right here on YouTube as well as over on Twitch. Daniel Galvin, Demiurge, Devin Happy, Eric Wade, Gamestake, Heyo, Kilo Kilo, Michael, Talon Starkey, Tristan Bennett, and Zalvador. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, let me know by hitting that like button, and I'll be here hoping you roll at least three nat 20s in your next D&D session, especially if you want to be a bottomless pit of rage that is insanely hard to kill and just punches your enemies into oblivion as Broly from Dragon Ball Super and Dragon Ball Z in Dungeons & Dragons.